Welcome to OPM Connect, the program that gives you an insight into government's policies, plans, and programs. I'm Naomi Francis. This week, we talk youth matters. That's because the youth, they do matter. You know, already, by the way, in the month of November, it's actually being celebrated as Youth Month, and already we'll have, we'll have, we've had the sitting of the Youth Parliament, and last week we had the induction of the Youth Advisory Council. And so today, to speak more about Youth Matters, we're pleased to be joined by the Honorable Alando Terralong, the State Minister in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Right beside him, we have Mr. Davy Horton, the Policy Analyst in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Uh, all young people, but the youngest of all of them, Chad Rattray, the former Youth Ambassador, former Kingston College Head Boy, but let's start off by talking a little bit about this policy booklet, the National Youth Policy, the popular version. I think anybody can just pick up a copy here. Very, very informative. But let's start off by, Minister, tell us what the government's policy on youth is. We recognize as a government that we hold Jamaica in trust for our youth. We understand completely that there can be no bright tomorrow. There can be no prosperity without having youth at the table. And so the policy that you have here, it really realizes <clears throat> Jamaica's vision for youth to ensure that they are engaged, educated, empowered, to ensure that they have a seat at the table so that they can maximize their full potential and make a valuable contribution to national development. There are six key policy areas, um, you know, and primary amongst them, we have education and empowerment, recognizing that every single Jamaican youth has the right to equal and fair access to education. So you would have realized that over the last three years, we have made changes to, for example, the PATH program. Whereas students would receive lunch, students on PATH program would receive lunch three times per week, we've now increased the budget significantly to ensure that our Jamaican youth can have access to lunch five days per week. We've also, over the last three years, increased the education budget. What we have seen over the last three years is a move from $83 billion to now over $100 billion being spent on the education of our Jamaican youth. Yes. And we speak about entrepreneurship. Of course, you know, through Heart, our partners, we've been having a lot of jobs and skills training. We've increased our TVET program. So we've had several firsts this month, um, starting with, you know, our children. Our children, I remember when I met with, um, with, with UNICEF and they said, you know, minister, we wanted to do something different. And we came up with, you know, how about having them at the um, presenting in parliament? And I said, you know, this is a great idea. I will do everything I can to ensure that the children as young as seven years old, that their voices are heard in parliament. So we put things in place and it was one of the most powerful presentations in the history of Jamaica's parliament, hearing from Ngozi, Tafari, Keneal, you know, just hearing their young voices speaking about crime and violence and the rights of children. Because as a government, we understand our local commitment to our children and we also understand our international commitment to our youth. So that was a big plus for youth month, having the young children, having their voices be heard, which shows that the right of every child, even at seven years old, to political participation. You're very, very engaged in the whole process of ensuring that our youth really do transform the country. But let's go to Davy Horton because he's with the policy, the nitty gritty work now, dealing with uh, what the youth really, in terms of giving, giving them a voice, beg your pardon, in our process. Help us understand the process though, that was involved in getting this document together, so much so that we're having all these uh, activities rolled out this month. The, the National Youth Policy was revised in 2017. It was tabled in Parliament. Yes. And we realized coming out of the process that uh, drove the, the revision, we realized that there were very low awareness with respect to the National Youth Policy. And a part of the implementation process, we recognize that there is really a need to raise awareness among the uh, utilizing um, what young people are familiar with. And one of the ideas we came up with, whoa, we have Vision 2030. There's a popular version. Yes. Why not do a, a, a popular version for the national youth policy in a language that speaks to the young people in a language that they're able to relate to? And we went further in even um, pushing the limit or, or the status quo, if you would want to put it that way, by incorporating, partnering with the Jamaica Language Unit at yes. the University of the West Indies so to we have a translate the, the National Youth Policy in a language that we speak 
every day which is patwa so we which have, is we, patwa. have we have some elements of it in patwa so we have yes we have Very a good. big section of it in patwa and we also recognize that though we speak in this dialect young people are not necessarily exposed to how it is written in a standardized yes. manner and so we took the opportunity to develop a crash course a crash course section to it before so they're able to make themselves familiar with how the language is read so the national youth policy someone asked me how would i describe it Please do. Uh, and yes. i told them well it's the young people's bible in a way <laughs> uh, you really need to get to know it because it is your tool of not only holding government accountable but it is your tool uh, to basically show your ways and means on, on uh, well how you can be a part of the process of impacting change i want to thank you for that and ensuring mm -hmm. that this policy comes out but i have a young man who's yeah. really been very active mm -hmm. in this okay, whole matter yes. of youth advisory councils mm -hmm. and certainly uh, has been shaping a lot of the the discussions from the youth perspective chad tell us a little bit about your activism in youth matters so over the years, since at the age of 15, I would have served in the National Secondary Student Council. How old are you now? I'm 19 years 19, old now. 19, so, so four uh, years. Yes, yes, four years. Uh, fifth anniversary is next year. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, yes, so the National Secondary Student Council, which is a program under the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, uh, would have moved on to serve as the head boy of Kingston College. And other opportunities would have came up. So I would have served as the vice president of the Jamaica Prefix Association, mm -hmm. which is now also a program under the Ministry of Education. An another first. All another, right. yes. yes. Um, and then I would have served as a national youth parliamentarian for mm -hmm. East Rural St. Andrew, uh, which is where I live. I live in Maryland district. Uh, the deputy youth mayor of Kingston and St. Andrew. Right. Uh, so that's a youth council that is done by local government in right. Kingston and St. Andrew. As, as I close, I just want to get just your top two um, things for next year regarding young people and moving the agenda forward for them. And I start off with, with Chad. Okay, so the two things uh, that I would like to see us coming together on is one, climate change. And the other thing is safety how we can create a safer Jamaica. Safety and security. Uh, safer, prosperous, and a progressive Jamaica that really works for all people, uh, works for all young people. Thank you, Chad. Davey? Um, for me, um, final thoughts, um, looking forward, going forward into 2020, I want to really see, well, from the division and the youth we work with, a more closer partnership in this whole process of uh, youth development. We have a, a young, youthful, energetic, and very strategic-minded Prime Minister who I, I, I has, on many occasions, and certainly through his actions, engaged young people to ensure that they do have a, a voice and certainly a seat at the table. Uh, example, right here, <laughs> Minister Theralong. So I'll give you the final word. I just want to say that the youth of Jamaica, they are at the table. Our Prime Minister has ensured that they're at the table. He has entrusted me with this portfolio to ensure that they are at the table and they are being engaged, they are being empowered. What I want next year, next year I want our Youth Advisory Council. I've been asking them for their policy papers and I know they're working on them. So I want their solutions. I want them to be advising the government and I want to see those policy papers written. And listen, rural youth, you're involved. Marginalized youth, remember, a part of the government's policy, one of the goals is social reintegration and, and inclusion. Jamaica belongs to all of you. There is no prosperity without having you at the table. That is the partnership for prosperity, which includes our youth. Thank you so much, Minister. Really appreciate it. And certainly, it's all capped off this uh, Saturday night with the Prime Minister's Youth Awards that will happen. Thank you so much. It's yeah. going. So I, I see the signs already around around the place, man. It is going to be lit. So thank you all for, for coming and speaking with us about Youth Matters. Very, very engaging discussion. Really appreciate it. And thank, thank you, you, viewers, for watching this week. Join us again next week for another interesting discussion on OPM Connect.